Hello students, you are with Miss T and you are about to start part one of a full regions test. We're only going to do part A in this video, so let's get started. One of the first tips that I have to give you is I know it's I know a lot of students don't like doing this, but you have to read all the directions from top to bottom. Don't miss a thing. Part A is worth 30 points, okay? Answer all questions in this part. Directions, 1 through 30. For each statement or question, record on the separate answer sheet the number of the word or expression that of those given best completes the statement or answer the question. So let's get ready. Number one, the removal of mitochondria from a typical animal cell would have an immediate effect on a cell's production of mitochondria makes ATP energy. Always associate mitochondria with ATP energy. So if you take away the mitochondria, you're taking away ATP. It's going to affect the ATP levels, not glucose, not DNA, not oxygen. The answer to one is three. Number two, which factor would be an abiotic limiting factor for fish living in a lake in New York State? Abiotic are non-living things, okay? Don't go and mention rocks. Abiotic things in the environment that affect living things is levels of oxygen, levels of CO2, levels of... Oh, water, H2O, nutrients, chemicals, temperature, weather. These are abiotic, non-living. Okay, let's check which factor would be an abiotic limiting factor which would be a factor that would affect living things in a lake. Okay, the amount of algae, algae is living, so that's not it. The number of humans fishing, humans are living, that's not it. Number of fish predators, that's living. Acidity of the water, definitely acidity is non-living factor. It's an abiotic factor. So number two is choice four. Number three, a native species is competing for resources with a non-native species that was accidentally introduced into the area. This is called invasive species. These are animals that are brought to a new environment and then those non-native species are competing for food and resources with native species. Let's continue. Let's see what the question is asking. The non-native species are more likely to survive than the native species when. So they're asking here, which choice best explains how the invasive species non-native will survive? Okay. Both species eat the same food. Predator prey. Predators prey on both species. The native species is immune to a particular pathogen present in the ecosystem. The non-native species has no natural enemies present in the ecosystem. So the best answer for, for number three is choice four. In order for the invasive species or any species to survive, it will not have any enemies. If they're sharing things and sharing food, they're going to survive because they're getting the resources. But for choice for number four, for number three, choice four is the best answer because in order for them to survive, they should not have any natural enemies. Okay, let's take a look at number four. Evidence suggests that a large meteorite hit Earth 65 million years ago causing a layer of dust to block the sun, cooling the planet. 
I'm going to annotate cooling planet. It is estimated that 70% of all plants and animal species, including the dinosaurs, died off. So 70% died off. Just annotating some key notes here. Died off as a result. The best explanation for the deaths of these organisms is that, so let's take a look at our choices. Consumers require sunlight to make sugars in order to survive. That is incorrect. Consumers are heterotrophs. They get their food elsewhere. Autotrophs require sunlight. The amount of energy available to the biosphere was decreased. So for this one, it makes sense. The amount of energy decreased if the sun was blocked off. Absolutely. Let's take a look at three. Energy is produced only by plants. That is not, that is incorrect. All animals eat plants for energy. Not all animals eat plants. There are animals that eat other animals that make it carnivores. So the best answer for four is choice two. Let's take a look at number five. The DNA, DNA formed using four kinds of base subunits in a double-stranded segment of DNA. The percentage of the base C is 18%. What is the approximate percentage of base T? So we know that C goes with G and A goes with T. Okay, no problem. You should have a calculator. But anyways, if C is 18%, then G should be 18%. And 18 plus 18 is 36. Okay. So now let's take 100 because we want to see how much left we have, how much we have left of 100% if we take away 36. So this will be 4. So we have 64% left. But 64 divided by 2, okay, so this will be 32. So the best answer... This will be 32%. This will be 32%. When you add 18 plus 18 plus 32 plus 32, that should give you 100%. But it's only asking for T. So T is 32%. So number five is choice two. If you got confused with this one, put a star on it and look for more questions like this to practice. Okay, all right, let's look at number six. Let's minimize a little bit more. Students were studying the different species of organisms in two different pond ecosystems. Their findings are summarized in the chart below. Okay, so here, plant species, pond A and pond B, two different ponds. In pond A, it had 10 plant species and 20 different microorganism species. In plant B, in pond B, it had 11 plant species and five different types of microorganisms. Based on the information in the chart, how does the biodiversity present in pond A compare to the biodiversity present in pond B? So without even looking at the choices, we can just say that pond A had more of biodiversity than pond B because it has 20 different types of microorganism species. 20, that's a lot more. Pond A, yeah, it had one more different plant um, species, but it didn't have much differentiation of microorganisms. This one has a lot of biodiversity. So let's see. Let's see what the choices tell us. For number six, pond A has greater biodiversity than pond B because there are more species present. That is correct. Pond A has more biodiversity. Pond B 
has more biodiversity than pond A, that's incorrect. Both ponds have the same levels of biodiversity, that's incorrect. The biodiversity cannot be determined without also identifying the A, that is not true. Biodiversity is talking about all the different living things. So for six, the best choice is one. Okay, let's go to number seven. When a person receives a transplanted organ, many medications are necessary to keep the organ from being rejected. The process of organ rejection is similar to the one involved in, so let's see, number one, the growth of cancerous tissues, that is incorrect, an allergic reaction, yes, because this has to do with the immune system. Genetic mutation, nope. The production of an antigen, no, that's something else. So the best answer for number seven is choice two. Your immune system is going to either accept or reject a transplanted organ. It's either going to say this organ is a foreign object or this organ is a part of us. An allergic reaction is reacting to a foreign object in the body, whether it's pollen Let's say it's pollen or dust or, or dander from um, a cat. And your body is going to um, react towards it. Okay? So the best answer for choice for number seven is choice number two. All right. We're doing great here. Now let's take a look at number eight. Okay. A lot of reading here, but you got to keep with me. We're doing this whole test together. Hydrilla, a plant native to Central Africa, was widely used in home aquaria. Hydrilla was often dumped with aquarium water into drains, sewers, or ponds. It then thrived and has become an invasive species disrupting aquatic ecosystems from Florida through the Northeast United States. Removing hydrilla from these ecosystems will most likely require either physical, physically removing it or adding chemicals to affected waters to kill it. The result of the introduction of hydrilla into native ecosystems in the United States has shown that. So this is asking about what we just read. So we have to see which choice best demonstrates information that we just read that's true. So let's take a look at number eight choices. Chemical controls will now be necessary to maintain every stable ecosystem. That is incorrect. Hydrilla will not continue to expand beyond one year because it is not native to the United States. That's not true. Just because it's not native doesn't mean it can't grow. Organisms and ecosystems of the United States can eventually build up an immunity to hydrilla. Sorry, just adjusting this here. That is incorrect. When humans alter ecosystems by adding specific organisms, serious consequences can result. Absolutely. This question is about invasive species. And these invasive species can be plants or animals. We just had a question um, in the previous page, number three. So this test really wanted to check your invasive species for sure. If you're having trouble understanding invasive species, um, you should look at more questions that talk about this. Okay, number nine. Let's take a look at number nine. One result of the ability of organisms to detect, sorry, and, appropriate, and appropriately respond to stimuli. Stimuli is when your body senses something in, within the environment. Is, let's see. So an ability, a result of an ability of an organism to detect. So detection from something from the environment. Let's see. Number nine choices. An organ malfunction, no. Number two, an allergic reaction, no. Three, dynamic equilibrium. This is talking about homeostasis. Gene manipulation, no. So one result of the ability 
of an organism to detect and appropriately respond, to detect something and appropriately respond, to then have homeostasis, dynamic equilibrium. So number nine is choice three. Let's take a look at number 10, our bats. The tube, let's actually enhance this, make this a little bigger. The tube-lipped nectar bat found in Madidi National Park in Ecuador has the longest tongue in, relative, in relation to its size of any mammal. Its 8.5 centimeter tongue can reach into the deepest flowers. It's likely that the population of these bats with exceptionally long tongues will increase in the Madidi National Park ecosystem if... So, what... Which one of these choices will increase the long tongues even more? Okay, let's see. For number 10, the population, the population of plants with very deep flowers suffers a sharp decrease. No, if it decreases, then it won't affect their tongue size. Okay, if anything, it'll shorten it. The gene for the long tongue trait cannot get passed on to future generations. No, it's asking what would increase it. This will decrease it. Other mammal species with long tongues move into the area and increase competition. Absolutely not. Other mammal species, they're not even related. How can they pass their DNA to the bat if they're not even the same species? The choice, the answer has to be four. The tongue variation provides the species with an advantage in surviving and reproducing. So this is natural selection. This is what it's testing for number 10. So choice 10 is 4. Number 11. Let's take a look at number 11. Some organisms have variations. Two sources of these variations are... So this is asking about which one demonstrates variation in, within a species mitotic and meiotic cell division nope that's just ways of making cells mutations and recombination okay this can definitely mutations give variation recombination gives variation cloning does not give variation but sexual reproduction does natural selection does give variation because that's where mutations happen. Mutations do happen with natural selection. Evolution does not, this is not variation. And this takes millions of hundreds of years, depending on the species. So for number 11, the best choice is two. Okay, let's move on to number 12. In order to prepare for a future outbreak of Ebola, Ebola was a bacterial infection. Nope, a harmful virus. My bad. Let's keep reading. <laughs> I lived through this, by the way. I was alive and teaching when we had an Ebola outbreak. It's a harmful virus. Two vaccines were tested. In order for either of these vaccines to be effective, they must. What does a vaccine have to do? When we inject a vaccine into the body of a human it has to make antibodies so that if you're exposed to ebola the antibodies can protect you from ebola and it'll it'll attack it so let's see which choice talks about antibodies cause the immune systems to produce special proteins that will recognize and destroy the virus i am hoping that this is talking about um the antibodies so let's Let's hold on to number one. Be able to destroy the DNA code? Absolutely not. Vaccines do not do that. Stimulate the human body to produce antigens? No, not antigens. Produce bacteria cells? They do not produce bacteria cells. So even though choice one um, is talking about proteins, the proteins that they're talking about are the amino acids, the, I'm sorry, the antibodies that I mentioned before. So it causes the immune system to produce special proteins that will recognize and destroy the virus. So the best choice for number 12 
is choice one. C number 13. The population of reindeer has been decreasing over the last 20 years. So decreasing. The Arctic, oh, in the Arctic, because climate change has led to more rainfall there. The rain freezes on top of the snow, preventing the reindeer from getting through the snow to find food. Which action by humans has most likely contributed to climate change? Wow! Spoke all about the reindeer, but who cares about the reindeer because they're asking about human activity causing climate change, okay? I hate these questions, but you know what? It is what it is. Recycling materials know that makes it better. Protecting wildlife know that makes climate change better, like that helps the earth. Maintain the ozone shield, that makes things better. Burning fossil fuels, this contributes to climate change. Burning oil, burning coal, creating pollution, creating climate change. The best answer for choice 13 was choice 4. Number 14. Which statement about the function of the human reproductive system is correct? Human reproductive system. Let's see. The zygote and zygote is a fertilized egg. The sperm is in there and it's fertilized. Helps the mother provide milk to the fetus? Absolutely not. Testes produce. Testes are the um, sex organs of males that produce sperm. Testes produce unfertilized eggs? Oof, No. Testes produce sperm. Ovaries are where male gametes undergo meiosis. Nope. Ovaries are in the females. They make eggs. The uterus is where the fetus develops internally until birth. Yes. The best choice for 14 was four. For those of you who really know the reproductive system, this was really silly. That was really silly. If you didn't know the reproductive system and you're learning as we go along, that's okay. We all have different backgrounds. Number 15. A Christmas tree farmer cuts down a native forest to plant Fraser fir trees. Compared to the original forest, the newly planted Christmas tree farm will most likely be... Okay, so let's take a look at our choices. One, more stable and more diverse? No. Two, more stable and less diverse? No. Number three, choice three, less stable and more diverse? No. Less stable and less diverse. Yes. Yeah, so let's read this one more time. The Christmas tree farmer cuts down a native native forest to plant Frasers. So this is a different. Cuts down the natives and puts more of the invasive. Again, with the invasive species. They're really hitting it this year. Compared to the original forest, the new, the newly, so the new forest has the, the native trees gone and and invasive species here. It's not going to be more stable. It's not going to be more diverse. It definitely is going to be less diverse, but it's not going to be more stable. It's going to be less stable, but it's not going to be more diverse. The best one is less stable, less diverse because you're cutting down the native trees and you're putting like invasive ones. The best answer for 15 was choice four. Okay. Number 16. Let's take a look at number 16. A major environmental concern in urban areas is pollution produced by automobiles. Fluids such as oil and gasoline may leak out of the vehicles and end up in lakes, streams, and rivers. One reason why scientists are concerned about this type of pollution is, okay, so it's talking about oil going into our water and causing pollution. Okay. So why is there, why are scientists concerned? So you don't want to read something that's like good. We want to find something that's bad about this. Okay, let's see choice one. The presence of, the, of these fluids in waterways could make them uninhabitable for aquatic organisms and reduce water supplies for humans. This is definitely a, a reason. The addition of these fluids will cause an increase in levels of lakes and rivers, possibly causing... No, it's not going to increase the level of water. These fluids increase the rate of photosynthesis? Nope. Nope, not at all. More sun, more plants increase, not more pollution. The addition of these chemicals to waterways reduces air quality? No, this is talking about water, not air quality. The best answer for 16 was choice 
number one. Choice one. Okay, let's take a look at number 17. When a plant is in a hot and dry environment, the guard cells may close the, sto the stomate openings in the leaves. This action will directly, okay. So you have a leaf, right? You have a leaf. And if you were to take a little section of that leaf and, in, and look at it under a microscope, you will see what looks like a guard cell. This guard cell will open or close if it needs to let something in, gases in or out. So this helps a plant maintain homeostasis. If there's a drought, no water, it closes. If there's a lot of excess water, it opens and lets out gases. And I'm surprised that they don't have a picture of this, but I'm sure, you know, if you take my class, um, if you're taking my class, you will absolutely um, see the guard cell lesson. Okay, let's take a look at the choices. Maintain homeostasis by reducing the evaporation of water. That's a good reason. Harm the plant by cutting off the oxygen. Guard cells don't cut anything off. Maintain homeostasis by preventing carbon dioxide from entering. Nope. Harm. So it does maintain homeostasis, but not preventing carbon dioxide from entering. It needs, the plant needs carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Harm the plant by cutting off, again with the cutting off, guard cells don't do that. So 17, the best choice is choice one. Number 18, let's read. Destruction of ocean habitats by pollution today means that the organisms living there may not survive in the future. By polluting the oceans, humans are, okay, so we're looking for bad things that can happen when we pollute the oceans, when humans pollute oceans. Helping, advancing, helping, helping? We're not helping anything by putting pollution in the water. Choice two, altering the equilibrium of ocean ecosystems altering the equilibrium so we're changing the balance of this could be a possible answer decreasing the rate of species extinction we're not decreasing extinction we're making it worse increasing the st stability of the ocean we are not keeping anything stable so the best answer for 18 is choice two 19. Each of the f each of the cells present in a woman contains a complete set of chromosomes. The only exceptions are her. Every single one of your cells of your stom stomata cells, okay? They all have a full, let's say that these are skin cells. They all have 46 chromosomes. Your liver cells, 46 chromosomes. Your eyeball cells, 46 chromosomes. The only time that your chromosomes are half are your sex cells. If you are a male, that's the sperm. If you are a female, that, that's where your eggs are. Half of the chromosomes of for a human, okay, 23. Half for that are in eggs, 23. So out of all this information, the only exception that you will not have full chromosomes is choice two eggs. 19 is two. 20. Okay, we have one of these guys going on. All right. So let's take a look at the diagram. The diagram below represents two processes that occur in some living organisms. So this is in living organisms. We have blank, carbon dioxide, water, process, sugar, and oxygen. Okay. So this right here, this is photosynthesis. This is photosynthesis. 
you've probably spent a lot of time studying this in class. This right here, let me change the pen color. Let me change it to pink. Sugar, oxygen, this right here. This is cellular respiration. X most likely represents, so let's see X. So X most likely represents what's left here that's not mentioned in the process of photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide, right? Water, but we're missing sunlight. Not the nucleus, not mitochondria, not carbohydrates. We're missing sunlight. So 20 is choice three. So make sure that you know your photosynthesis and cellular respiration formula because they do this sometimes. 21. Which row in the chart below contains the correct sequence of events involved in the formation of a human embryo? Human embryo, a human baby, a baby, a baby. Okay. So let's see what we're working with here. We have meiosis. We have mitosis. I'm just making sure that they're all, that it's all the same. We have differentiation and then we have fertilization. Okay. The very first thing you need is a sex cell. Okay. To make an embryo, you need a sex cell. So you need a sperm or egg. So number one is meiosis. Then... You need to fertilize the egg and the sperm. So fertilization is next. Once it's fertilized, you get a zygote, right? And then it starts splitting and growing into more and more and more cells. So that the growing and developing, that is mitosis. And then once you get those growing cells, it, it has to... Um, start changing into skin cells, brain cells, blood cells, bone cells, and that is differentiation. Okay, so let's see which one has meiosis first, one and four, so we're going to eliminate two and three. Okay, meiosis, fertilization, mitosis. Okay, so we have the best choice for 21 is choice four. All right, let's keep going. It's a number 22. H. pylori is the bacterium responsible for most ulcers and many cases of stomach inflammation. An antibiotic has been found to kill these bacteria. It works because H. pylori makes a particular enzyme that happens to react with the antibiotic and makes it poisonous to the bacteria. The sequences in the diagram below show the effects of antibiotic treatment on two strains of H. pylori, one which does not produce the enzyme. Okay, so here we have H. pylori normally produces enzymes. The antibiotic applied, they die. So this is the normal one. Okay, this is the mutant H. pylori. You give it the antibiotic and it survives and then it keeps reproducing and making more. The overall series of events best illustrates the process of H. pylori control by the stomach. No. DNA replication of bacteria. No. Mutation of antibiotic used. No, the mutation does not happen with the antibiotic, natural selection by the H. pylori, which is also the mutation, the DNA mutation happening. DNA mutation happened where this one was able to survive the antibiotic. That is DNA mutation, but this one is saying DNA mutation for the antibiotic. That's the medication. That's not correct. The best choice for 22 is choice four. 23 let's take a look at 23 let's increase here make this bigger the illustrations below are of an organism called 
Archaeopteryx, <laughs> which lived approximately 150 years ago. Archaeopteryx had teeth and claws like a dinosaur and wings with feathers like birds. I saw this in the Nat Museum of Natural History, actually. So we were able to see that it had feathers. We were able to see this from the fossil imprintation. Such fossils allow scientists to conclude that. So let's see what kind of conclusion we can get with number 23. Okay. Dinosaurs and birds all ate the same food. Absolutely not. Sexual reproduction in birds resulted in dinosaurs. <laughs> That's silly. Dinosaurs and birds share a common ancestor. Dinosaurs and birds belong to the same species. So, sorry. Let me erase this. I didn't mean to cross out three. It's definitely three because dinos dinosaurs and birds share a common ancestor if they have very similar characteristics. Birds have feathers and dinosaurs have feathers, so they must have a common ancestor. Dinosaurs and birds do not belong to the same species, but they can have a common ancestor. So for 23, the best choice is three. All right, let's take a look at number 24. Infestation with bed bugs is a serious health problem, and scientists seeking to control bed bug reproduction are constantly researching new options. It has now been shown that freezing any articles of clothing or bedding containing bed bugs at a temperature below 15 degrees Celsius for 3.5 days will kill all of the bed bugs and their eggs. So we now know that we can kill bed bugs with temperature. Using the technique of freezing is preferable to using chemical insecticides because a major disadvantage of using chemical pesticide is, now why is it bad to use chemical pesticides? Think of RAID. Think of all those poisons that we spray on roaches. So let's see what makes sense in terms of using chemical pesticides for number 24 are highly toxic to bed bugs but not toxic to other organisms no it could be toxic to all organisms could remain in the clothing or bedding and harm humans so yeah there's a possibility that if you use pesticides it can remain in clothing and bedding if you don't spray them all if you don't get them all for sure are made of molecules so the bed bugs will not develop resistance no that's not true could be useful for medical research and should not be wasted on bed bugs. Pesticides? No. So the best choice for number 24 is choice two. Let's take a look at number 25. Human society has become increasingly dependent on industry and technology. While this has had many benefits, it also has had the disadvantage of, so this is talking about human society becoming increasingly dependent on, in, on technology. Okay, a disadvantage of being very dependent on technology is, so let's take a look at the choices. Reducing the amount of food, no. Technology does not reduce the amount of food. Lowering the level of carbon dioxide, technology does not lower pollution okay raising the number of producers no this doesn't affect living things in that way increasing our reliance on energy sources such as fossil fuels yes if we're using a lot of technology we're using fossil fuels so 25 is choice four we're getting closer to the end okay let's take a look here always read the directions i know i know you gotta do it Within a specific kind of tissue, there are different types of cells. In bone tissue, there are four different cell types shown below. Osteocyte, osteoblast, osteogenic cell, osteoclast. Since the four types of cells contain the same genetic instructions, how is it possible for them to have different shapes and carry out different functions? Even though they all contain the same DNA in all the cells, Different cells have different genetic expression. So let's see which one um, speaks of that the best for number 26. 
Each cell type has the ability to remove unnecessary. No, they're not removing sections of DNA. Different parts of genetic code may be used in each of the types of cells. So this one talks about um, gene expression. Different genes mut mutations take place. Mutations do not take place. If a mutation takes place, that can cause cancer. Each cell type is the result of different methods of cell division. No, this is not talking about cell division. The best answer for number 26 is choice number two. That doesn't look like a two. Choice two. <laughs> 27, we're getting closer and closer. Okay, let's read the directions. The series of fossil snail shells Below represent 10 samples that were collected from deposits laid down from 10 million years ago to 3 million years ago. The shells are arranged in order by age. The shells shown represented how they looked at various times over a 7 million period year period. Okay, so this is the oldest. And as time passed by, this is the most recent, the youngest. So take a look at this. Take a look how it started. Take a look how it ended. Very cool. It would be most accurate to conclude that the snails of this species. So let's take a look at what kind of conclusion we can make from looking at how they changed for number 27. Changed in size due to the environmental changes to aff that affected the survival of different size snails. This is a good one. Grew smaller. Did it grow smaller? I'm not even going to finish that. It did not grow smaller. Change in size at different times. It changed. It did not change size at different times and continuously increased. So it, it's not that it got bigger than smaller than bigger than smaller. So it was consistently growing. So it's not choice three. Grew larger because an, an, as organisms evolve, they always become larger. No, that's not true. Organisms can become smaller, not larger. It all depends on the situation and natural selection. So the best choice for 27 is one. Ah, uh, we're almost done with part A. Look at that. We're on our last page. 28. When a person is threatened, the pituitary gland releases a hormone that stimulates the adrenaline glands to release stress hormones. So when you're threatened, when a dog is, a uh, when, no. Let's talk about chihuahuas. Chihuahuas are very feisty. Um, I would be hesitant to hold a chihuahua, but if a chihuahua starts running at me, I will absolutely have those stress hormones to help me run away. These stress hormones can cause a temporary increase in heart rate. This is an example of absolutely feedback mechanism. Whenever you have a reaction, a stimuli, you're being stimulated, okay, something you're you're being threatened your hormone releases adrenaline and then it causes you to have an increase in energy an increase um in heart rate that's so that you can run that is absolutely a feedback ne mechanism so the best answer for number 28 is choice two i'm not even gonna bother reading the other ones because they are wrong Ooh, we're reaching the end. Let's take a look at number 29. A plant commonly referred to as mother of thousands has lost its ability to produce eggs, so it no longer produces eggs. In order to reproduce, the edges of the plant's leaves asexually develop one parent, uh, miniature plants that drop off and grow into mature plants. So we're talking about asexual reproduction here. The cells of the offspring would have, so let's see what happens to the cells if they once made eggs, but now they have to uh, reproduce asexually. Let's see. The cells of the offspring would have, for number 29, half the genetic information. No, you need full, you need the whole thing. If it's one parent, you need, and it has 46, let's say it has eight chromosomes, then it needs to give the eight chromosomes if it's one parent, okay? It needs to give the full to make the full organism. The same genetic information when compared to the cells of the parent? Yes, because it's one parent. Twice as much? No, not twice as much. That'd be a mutant. Incomplete? Nope. 
it won't make the same organism. It'll be mutated. So the best answer for choice 29 is choice 2. Number 30, let's take a look at our last question for this session. The diagram below represents part of a biology process that begins with a chromosome containing a specific human gene being removed from a human cell. So here we have a human cell. Here's the nucleus. Something's being removed. That to me looks very much like a chromosome or a piece of a chromosome, but it says here a gene. The overall process is important because... so. I just want to read this again. The diagram below represents a part of biological process that begins with the chromosome containing spe a specific human gene being removed. Whenever we remove a specific gene, it's either genetic engineering, but let's see what's happening here. Let's see what the choice is, which choice makes sense for number 30. Okay. Maybe used to make human DNA identical to that of other organisms. No, it's only taking a section. Help scientists understand how amino acids are grouped together. Nope, this is not a protein. Results in the production of carbohydrates. We don't know that. May be used to produce chemicals that can be used to treat certain human disorders. Yes, because this is a section of, of DNA. And this could be a code for something. This could be, this reminds me very much of penicillin. Research penicillin on how we've discovered it and made it. And it's definitely with taking a section of a DNA of a particular bacteria to produce penicillin of a, um, and, and penicillin is an antibiotic. So the best choice for number 30 is for guys. We completed 30 questions of the January 2023 um exam so let's move on to part two